Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, a.k.a. Skylar Madison, and today I am going to do a little bit of an art critique for comic books, uh, specifically from Jeff Smith's comic book series, Bone. Now, before I get into it, I kind of want to talk about the art of making landscapes, and, and this is what most of this video is going to be covering, okay? Uh, so, making a landscape is extremely easy. The main thing to focus on is is something that I call personally, this is my personal term, I don't care if anyone else uses it, overlapping arcs, okay? Which is basically just where you uh, create these things like this, okay? So basically, if, if you picture these as separate objects, and, and of course, th these are not well illustrated, I understand that, but if, if you visualize these as separate objects, each one of these little arcs, uh, you know that this right here, this number one, which represents this arc right here that is in front of every other arc okay two and three are behind one okay but they are in front of four four is in front of five and six uh, but six is behind five okay so that's kind of how I visualize this sort of thing okay so let's go ahead and just quickly line out an entire illustration with just something like that let's say I want uh, something kind of in the foreground here okay so that's let's just picture that as I, I mean an arc it doesn't necessarily have to be an arc but that is just kind of like one of the ground planes okay and let's let's give a little bit of a overlapping arc going on there Let's give it a little bit of irregularity. Uh, let's maybe put something underneath it or behind it or something. I don't know. Let's uh, let, let let's make it a little bit more elongated. How about that? And and then maybe put another one right there. Let's maybe create an overlapping arc here and then another overlapping arc right here. And let's uh, actually put something right there and another one right here. We're just kind of drawing out a little sketch, okay? And maybe I might want something a little bit bigger here and then something behind it and then another something behind it all right so now we can focus on our overlapping arcs maybe we might want something kind of like this okay so now we have something kind of cool going on maybe off in the distance we might want there to be something occupying this space right here maybe there's a, a bit of a waterfall okay let's go ahead and create a little pool of water that that exists throughout here uh, maybe the impression that there's a, the river kind of flowing throughout this region all right and so maybe we might want there to be trees so we can just kind of draw some overlapping arcs going through here as a sketch right draw some stuff that doesn't necessarily have to look really super fancy so maybe there might be you know rocks that are kind of forming up here maybe some overlapping arcs uh, which we'll just draw as circles for right now or half circles okay excellent so now we've got uh kind of the the basic stuff for a sketch let's go ahead and lower the opacity of this and let's go ahead and create another layer all right so now if we wanted to really flesh this out we we have all the makings of something uh for a, a, a bit of scenery and we can be a little bit more picky about our line work all right and so so uh, maybe we might want to kind of do something like that and just kind of add some squiggly do's to this. Maybe we might want to add a few more here and there. A few more overlapping arcs is what I'm saying. And we can go back to our sketch and just add a few more overlapping arcs here and there. Okay, maybe a different type of uh, overlapping arc, which is more of a more of a spike, like overlapping spikes. Okay, and we can kind of rethink how we illustrate these off in the distance. Okay, and so now we can go back to our second pass kind of give this some some bushiness is all that we need to do really and then for these we might want to uh, just add a little bit more uh, like spikiness uh, to them uh, coming down something kind of like that and we don't need to like fully render everything because they're off in the distance that sort of thing and in almost no time flat basically you have what looks like fully populated forests is basically what you wind up with with a very, like a very formulaic sort of approach to drawing backgrounds. Now, of course, I'm not trying to make this some um, masterful work of art or anything. I'm just kind of demonstrating a little bit of a point by including you in on a, a process that I've kind of learned by studying the Bone comic book. 
books and I'm, I'm going to kind of demonstrate not just with this illustration but by kind of looking at his illustrations, Jeff Smith's illustrations and, and kind of showing what it is that he's made and all that good stuff. Let's add some overlapping arches here and there around here. All right, and let, let's just add some little straight lines along the bottom of them so that, you know, we get the impression that there's like uh, the bark to some trees, I guess. And uh, let's just add some little squiggly dews to them. Maybe the line for these little squiggly dews is going to be thinner than in most places. Okay, and cool. So I back out and we're coming out with uh, a, a nice looking bit of scenery. Okay. And uh, so here, you know, we can maybe just kind of create some little bits of, I don't know, irregular parts that kind of with a little bit of angular shape language to kind of communicate. Maybe there's a, a bit of a rock face going on here. Again, this is still kind of implementing the thought of overlapping uh, arches, but in, in this case, it's overlapping angles. Angles, okay, so we're just kind of overlapping a bunch of angles and that that's it really and in no time flat We have uh, what looks like a uh, mountain like uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean So we can kind of go the opposite direction with this in some places and just kind of quickly construct our, our rock face this is really simplistic stuff at least I, I usually uh, tend to do things a little bit more like with a, a completely different workflow, but I do admire this workflow right here. And so here we go. Maybe there's some little ripples that, that kind of go around these. Okay, cool. At the bottom of the waterfall, there's usually like a plume of smoke. So let's add some overlapping, not smoke, but vapor, like a big splash. So let's add some overlapping arches that kind of go along through here. So let's kind of draw out this pool of water a little bit better. And based off of the overlapping arches that we've created, just really roughly, really, we get to kind of decide what we get to keep, what we don't, okay? And uh, for the water, it could just be a series of overlapping lines. They're kind of like arches and stuff like that, but they're, they're lines that are kind of arced and stuff. Maybe that's a little bit too gung-ho. Maybe it'll be a little bit dense in some areas than others. Okay, and let's continue with this rock face. And some, sometimes it helps if you just kind of think of geometric objects as well, but let's try to keep it simple, uh, kind of with the formula of overlapping objects. So as a, as a second pass, as still considering this as a, as a bit of a sketch, you can see how this, this can come together and how you can quickly, within a short period of time, uh, come up with something that actually is starting to look pretty stinking cool. Let's make some overlapping arches that kind of are more condensed because these are much further away. Okay, and then we can go ahead and uh, do some of our magic here. So yeah, overlapping action. It's, it's all just this concept of something overlapping over another object, uh, kind of like this, okay? Uh, that, that's pretty much it. You can see just right off the bat here, I, I already, like, I'm not gonna fully illustrate this for this video. In fact, I, I don't plan on fully illustrating this at all. But like, you can see how I'm coming up with this landscape and all that I'm really doing are overlapping arches kind of like this. Like, it's, it's very formulaic and you know that right there can become a forest or i'm coming up with overlapping sharp shape language sort of things going on kind of like this okay like you're able to to kind of perceive objects as being in front of another object uh, really easy and that can become really easily uh, just a rock face right there with very little difficulty at all and you you use it smart enough the concept of of little arches that overlap over each other or sharp uh shape language overlapping over each other and within a short period of time you can quickly come up with an image that looks really convincing and i i have never 
felt as though landscapes are difficult. The landscapes are extremely easy to work with, actually. And uh, so this, if you just are fascinated with the artwork of Bob Ross and you just, wow, I don't know how he does it. Well, this is this is some of how uh, these sorts of illusions uh, come about. It, it's just with, uh, with this... V- very basic concept really where you're you're able to just use overlapping shapes and that's it like drawing nature is not that difficult okay and of course you know the uh, the underbelly of uh of a forest it tends to be darker so we can kind of draw some squiggly stuff under here uh to kind of get it to have some overlapping stuff here and then we can kind of fill it in to some extent uh because it's the underbelly to the forest here and maybe we might not be able to see all of that but as you can see like the options are endless with just those two concepts or or even like the third concept that i introduced where you just draw a whole bunch of overlapping sharp angles okay uh, overlapping acute angles and then you uh you know you lower the opacity and then you go ahead and create another layer and then you just kind of go like that and within a short period of time you have have basically what looks like an entire forest and you don't necessarily have to render every single detail of these trees uh, necessarily like just just enough to, to indicate that there's some sort of overlap going on there and you got all that it needs all that all that it takes to kind of uh, get this stuff to work together uh, as a forest Okay, so I deactivate that, uh, that previous layer, and you can see, like, uh, of course, you know, that this doesn't look very good if it's in the foreground. You'd want to render it better if it's in the foreground, but yeah, you, you get the point. So let, with no further ado, I, I kind of want to show you uh, Jeff Smith's artwork and, and show you how what I just showed you correlates with what I've noticed out of his work, okay? So let me go ahead and pull out his work. Now, all of these images just came straight off of Google Images, so some of the resolution isn't the best but uh, it is what it is now here you can you can actually see exactly what I described uh, just a, a short while ago okay now uh, it looks like um, uh, let, let me just lower the opacity of this a little bit okay all right so like it looks as though uh, for these trees right here though okay Th- these are more so in the foreground so of course he would want them to be better rendered so it looks like he just kind of drew out like with his sketch okay he just kind of drew out uh, a shape kind of like that and then he probably just went like that for his next step he just goes ahead and you know uh, he, he worked with pencil and paper and ink so he didn't necessarily have the digital tools that I use but you, you get the point let me change the color to blue and then he goes ahead and you know he's got these basic shapes all lined out and and so he just kind of goes something like that and then he uses like the pressure sensitivity with a brush uh, an, an inking brush to kind of put in some little impressions of shadows and, and such like that and then you know he might in, he goes ahead and he just kind of does the same thing and again he uses his brush to kind of put in little details here and uh, because the, the, these trees are in the foreground uh, and, uh, and then he goes ahead and includes some of the bark of the tree right there and then he you know he's like thinking okay well let's go ahead and add in some more dimension here maybe a few little impressions of, of leaves and stuff like that just with a bit of pressure sensitivity and, and, and such like that and uh, so all right so there we have it we have uh, a tree okay and you know he did the same thing with this tree right here uh similar sorts of workflows with these um really fascinating stuff but really out here you can see that that's like overlap overlapping stuff going on here overlapping arches all throughout here i guarantee you in his rough sketch this is all he really did and then when he went about inking it you know all, all of this blue work i guess would still be pencil i guess and then you know he would uh go ahead and 
pull out, you know, his ink work, and all of a sudden he's just kind of implying some of these overlapping arches. But overall, he's just drawing these little squiggly dews in order to create the impression of leaves. I, I do think it's weird that he's got this little pattern going on through here to kind of imply some leaves and stuff. But, you know, he's got these little pock marks here to kind of imply detail. More detail than there really truly is. And then, you know, more squiggly dews, more squiggly dews, more squiggly dews. All throughout here, within a short period of time, he's got an entire forest uh, finished on his canvas. And uh, some of what I showed you earlier, you know, I'm pretty sure that with his pencil, he just kind of drew out some overlapping arches going on through here once again. And and, and that's it. Like, and, and then at, at the bottom of some of them, you know, he goes ahead and he draws some straight lines. And that's that's the bark of the tree. Okay. Now you can see that he, he did some more detailed rendering. But if you really pay attention, all of the leaves are all really impressionistic. It's it's all like pressure sensitivity, like pressing light to, to pressing harder. And, uh, you know, it's that's all you really need in order to create the the leaves really it's and sometimes he goes the opposite direction i guess and then little pock marks here and there a little bit of unified direction here and there and really really utilizes his pressure sensitivity that he would use with an ink brush in order to pretty much create what what looks like a, a tree that's highly rendered but it's really not it's just a series of silhouettes now the the color work makes it look like you know all of this uh, outside was rendered but it wasn't all, all that he rendered with his inks was just a series of silhouettes and the, the only little bits that where there's like some sort of rendering towards a border was right there but like there's no real rendering of a border here up on this bush up here he rendered out the scene probably by just going whoop whoop and then kind of implies that there's some little overlaps going on through there and then you know the final mountains off in the distance okay and then uh, later on he decided okay maybe maybe I might want some more little overlapping arches here and uh, and then decided what kind of tree it would be and then uh, you know uh, maybe something right there and maybe something right there and maybe something right there and he, he just fleshed it out with you know just going like that going like that going like that uh, just just with uh, with his initial sketch, okay, and then he fleshed it out uh, much more later on. But I, I almost absolutely guarantee that with his initial sketch, with his pencil work, he started out lightly drawing out uh, little overlapping arches and then fleshed them out uh, bit by bit. And it's not like it, it it's really super quick, but even still you're not having to render everything out you're you're just you start out simple with basic shapes and then you flesh them out later on okay and uh, he just brings all of these overlapping arches over to basically this this little overlap that he's got here and, and hey look at that he's got some triangular shapes so some of the pine trees still exist off in the distance okay and then um, this is kind of interesting he kind of drew out some overlapping arches out here kind of like this and decided to make some of them a little sharp maybe some of these are pine trees and even like kind of drew some straight lines even maybe that's bark to a tree uh, I don't know I don't, I don't know how he perceived it and uh, or, or what he's necessarily communicating with those uh, straight lines that are occasionally coming down uh, but here you know you got straight lines uh, underneath a tree canopy and once again you got a whole bunch of overlapping arches going on through here that he later rendered out like he starts with that and then he uh, goes ahead and later on comes with his ink or or maybe with a darker like working with darker pencils and he goes like that around the, uh, around his sketch uh, is basically what I'm saying with all of this stuff that that I've kind of uh, drawn out here and and he did that all the way to the back of the canvas all the way as far as you can see he made this part just kind of like really scratchy uh, but ultimately it is still just overlapping little arches going on all, all, all off towards the distance it's it's fascinating uh, there are exceptions to, to how like to just overlap
overlapping arches, but really, like, e even how he rendered out this bush here. Like, um, let me turn off some of these layers here. Because you already know that they're overlapping arches, but, like, the way that he rendered out the, the leaves of this bush is, is basically just a series of overlapping arches going down like that and using his pressure sensitivity and making it really dense and some sometimes, like, making it less as dense. And he, he just went like that throughout the entire process and within a short period of time he had all of this rendered out just by doing this with his inks and and an ink brush that's it that's that's it and and ultimately that's that's a similar sort of workflow from what i was talking about right here in a way the, these are all just overlapping arches like maybe he kind of rendered out that maybe he kind of rendered that out and and maybe he he even kind of drew out a little bit of a fanning uh here and there. Uh, maybe he did that and then decided to fan some of this out. He just decided, okay, well, um, all right, let's go ahead and fan this out. Okay, so there's these little, let's draw uh, a, a chicken foot right here and then uh, a little Y intersection and then another Y intersection because that tends to look like a tree. And that's what he always does when he draws out trees, a, a Y intersection here. And, and then he kind of goes like that. And then, you know, he's got a chicken foot here and then he's got uh, a Y intersection here and then another Y intersection and he did the same thing with this tree all the way through it okay and then uh, later on you know he comes with his inks like like I mentioned earlier you know he comes with his inks and then he let me just pull out a black I guess and then he just kind of uh, uses his pressure sensitivity to the best of his ability to kind of imply leaves and in a way he's still just doing overlapping arches okay that, that's really all, or arcs, uh, overlapping arcs and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he, he might have, you know, even drawn out some of these kind of like that and um, drawing lightly with a pencil. And then, you know, he, he comes with his inks and stuff like that. And he just kind of, he's kind of perceiving maybe how this tree came together that way. I don't know. I just don't imagine that this stuff took that long. Like, I, I just don't think that this took a whole bunch of thought to, to to create. I, I think it's it's formulaic and for, having a formula is not a bad thing and I mean it works like even though the main character is this super cartoony uh, hokey looking character you look at this scenery anyone can look at this scenery and say yes you know what uh, somebody who is extremely talented made that background but the thing is is it is just a formula it's just a, most of it is just overlapping arcs that's it that's it that's all it took in 90% of what illustrated this image. Uh, there are a few little notable exceptions. I mean, uh, like, uh, whatever the hell this shape is, I, I don't know what, like, that's supposed to be like a rock. That's something that I don't really like. I don't like how that rock was illustrated at all. You know, maybe this started out as an arc. I don't know. Uh, but really, other than these trees here, and uh, maybe this tree th here, and this tree here, and this rock rock face up here. 99% of this is just overlapping arcs. In my mind, he constructed this exactly the same sort of way as how I started out my illustration at the very beginning of this video. Oh, pure and simple. Uh, that's the way I see it. Okay, so this is the next one, okay? This right here is kind of cool because like, ultimately, what I, what I see when when I look at this is he just basically started out okay well the horizon line is right here I'm gonna leave the impression that there's some sort of building off in the distance here okay and now it's time for the overlapping arcs okay and so he draws out some sort of overlapping arc right there and then you know he probably with his pencil just kind of drew out a bunch of little overlapping arcs going on through here and then he's like okay let's draw some trees okay so you know it could be just as simple as going like that and then okay a little y shape and a another y shape and then okay so there's another tree over here so we kind of draw that out and then that and then a, so that there's two y shapes right there that's that's a tree and then whoop and that's that's the beginning of a tree and then you know just kind of blocking in some of this stuff like at least digitally speaking this is kind of how i would start illustrating the trees and, and then later on I, I would flesh them out so that they have this 
this side and then this side to the tree like like this is what I'm talking about so like later on I would come back and then I would start inking out this so that I would wind up having some sort of impression of tree notice how he didn't even finish the tree here like here let me turn off the red and the blue like look at that he didn't even finish the tree I'm like he put a little bit of bushiness uh, to uh, the tree uh, right here and right here and here and here but you know he just left it blank like all, all throughout here like there's nothing here this branch is going like that but like there's no tree no actual leaves or anything like that but then again the image didn't really need it what I find fascinating about this is that uh, he didn't decide to come back with his inks and go something like that and then start fleshing out the the tree bark with anything like that no instead he just continued like he came back with his inks and just wonk you know kind of filled this all in with ink and it, it, of course he was more careful than I am and then he's like okay so uh, we have grass here okay so with with his uh, sketch you know he'd probably already have that all drawn out and then he's like okay I'm just gonna kind of imply that there's some some grass there and then oh no, I'm gonna feel all of that in and then he, he goes ahead and he actually actually just kind of puts in silhouettes like that going through here and of course the characters if you look at the characters inside of the scene they are completely unaffected by the light uh, by, by any of these shadows kind of fascinating they're, they're just, and, and yet they fit in in the scene they fit in in the scene and yet they are not affected by any of the shadows isn't that weird it's like they defy the light physics in the scene and yet they fit in in the scene this was an extremely easy scene to kind of create and yet uh, here you know he's got these straight lines where he kind of has like a little bit of overlapping arches that are they're mostly straight but they're they're not and that implies oh this is far off in the distance and uh, you know he even has like a, a downed tree going on here <laughs> which helps make it feel as though this the scene is, is more fleshed out than it really is this didn't really take a lot of effort I, I, I think I, I don't think that there was a lot of hard work involved and yet it looks phenomenal it's a great image and it's just one panel of a comic book excellent work uh, I, I love this I, I, I really think that Jeff Smith is a very talented artist so let me go ahead and close out of this and open up the next one okay here's something that's kind of interesting so I'm pretty sure and I could be wrong of course I could always be wrong but I'm pretty sure that he rendered out this panel first okay because he's illustrating lightning flashing okay the lightning flash uh, and then what he did is he just I, now this this was in the 1990s so digital uh, drawing and stuff like that was not as common okay so what I think he did is he just photocopied uh, his like the ink work that he did on this panel and then uh, photocopied it and placed it here I'm just gonna call this panel one and here panel three now there are slight differences to, to how uh, panel one and two is inked like the rain is more dense in panel three the rain droplets seem a lot more dense they're located in different areas okay and not only that but uh, I've kind of studied like little patterns inside of these bushes here and it's a different pattern than on this panel right here so he, he inked panel one and three differently than each other okay but he uh, what I think he did is he kind of used uh, panel one as a reference as he further inked the artwork that that's represented in panel two okay um, and it, it's kind of interesting it's like here they are they're under the tree they look kind of scared and uh, you you might be thinking to yourself why why are they scared and you know it's a nighttime scene because all of this is in in darkness the trees are in darkness you you can't really see much of the rendering of the trees and and really all of the all the trees really are is, are just little tiny shapes of white that exceed outside that aren't black basically and then all of a sudden you know kapow! and uh, you know the lightning flashes there's very few shadows going on here um, like you, you can see shadows going on here 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 a, a little bit here going on and you can see that they're they're surrounded by rat monsters uh, and, and once again the rat monsters that just to further illustrate my point they're just overlapping arches that's all they are <laughs> it's like 
he and even these rocks that's that's all they are they're overlapping arches just going like this and I, I like how he he remembered to like change it up the size of these overlapping arches that's something that that I tend to forget quite a bit whenever I do overlapping arches every time I, I take a look at, at Jeff Smith's artwork I oftentimes find myself L uh, learning new things about this this really simplistic style and then l look at this like the ground is constructed of little overlapping arches as well uh that <laughs> like everything almost in inside of jeff smith's artwork is an overlapping arch fascinating all of a sudden everything goes back to black again and that's why they they're terrified bone probably has that expression on his face because uh earlier he didn't know he like here he doesn't know what he's in for i think I, I i haven't read the comic book by the way i've just studied the the artwork okay now the thing is is that i think that the way jeff smith would uh, draw out his characters i actually think that he would draw them separately and then use an exacto knife and cut them into the scene that's how i think that he drew his characters and so from panel one to panel two i think the poses are exactly the same just two photocopies of the same drawing but their poses change on panel three so i guess not much time passed from panel one to panel two but then now bone knows what he's in for he's seen the nightmare through the lightning yeah and and now he's calming down more yeah he, like here he looks like he's he might rustle some noise up inside of the bushes but now that he knows what he's in for he calms down um or or at least settles down Okay, so this is a this is a good scene. It's really difficult to really tell what it is that he rendered exactly inside of the scene uh, because originally the Bone comic book series was released as a black and white comic book. That's why uh, two of the images that I've shown you so far are clearly been black and white, and then there's two images of his work that are like fully colored. Uh, much later on, he gave a company the license to color his work. But with his colored work, it's hard to know what he rendered out. But I really do think that he, he maybe came in here and with a really thin brush maybe uh, put in all this detail. But I can't really critique or, or say anything about it because uh, unfortunately these images came from uh, Google Images and the image resolution. Like if I zoom in on it, it just, uh, I, I have no idea what he did. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it's just, it's unclear but once again you know uh in, in jeff smith's classic fashion you know he just does overlapping arches and then you know he changes it up with a smaller one and then a big one and then a smaller one and then a big one and then maybe there's an, an overlapping arch here and an overlapping arch here and then overlapping arch overlapping arch overlapping arch you know another one another one and then a small one and a small one right here and to there you have it you have a fireplace and then you know stuck in between these two you know he's got a y-shaped tree branch uh kind of fascinating how how he's able to pull that off and uh really i think that the scene is constructed with just a, a series of overlapping arches going something like this and i think he really did just start out with with these shapes when he first set out to flesh out the image i think he just did stuff like this and then i i think he just kind of went like that okay there you have it okay you have another tree another tree okay maybe there's a, a tree going up like that and then you know and he didn't even really render out the leaves on these trees if you really notice like all he did was just kind of just draw some little squiggly dews and that's it that's that's the leaves on the tree and then you know of course he's got another y shape for uh, a branch here and then you know he's got kind of a you know the base of a tree right here and then another y shape oh that must be a tree uh and then you know for this this rock stuff right here like after he went ahead and drew the initial sketch of the overlapping arches uh, he comes back with you know a darker bit of pencil work and then he just draws out a bunch of uh overlapping arches and uh there you have it you know he's got that going on and then he he thinks about how uh the you know the rough sketch of what he did for the tree how the trees are, are going to be having their roots dig into the water as they as the roots wrap around the rock really really nice little texture there to the world building and, and it's it is realistic there are trees that do that sort of thing now i wish i 
I wish I could find this image uh, with like at full resolution so that I could give it a full critique. Um, but like, I, I, I would be curious to see exactly what he did to illustrate the water and all that, the, the splashing. But you, you can tell that with this in the foreground, you can tell that he, he took some great pains. Like he, he drew in some little notches here because this, this stump is evidently really close to us. And then, you know, he just spent a really long time just drawing a lot of really straight lines and and sometimes having a little bit of a pattern going on here and he spent a lot of time just kind of cross hatching all in one direction just this stuff going out on here now I can critique the tree but I can't critique what's going on on the ground unfortunately but yeah really nice looking scene again I don't think very much effort went into actually making it uh, one thing that I find interesting is like this zone within this region right here I like that overlapping arch and the trees coming off of it it helps sell the idea that there's depth and it also adds to the illusion that there is a tree canopy up above that like all of this because it's enshrouded in silhouette kind of fascinating how those sorts of decisions worked out the grass here now he doesn't always render grass out like this sometimes you know he renders grass out like this you know just an occasional little thing here but like since this grass is so close he's like rendering out each blade of grass and adding in like which, which in its own way is a type of overlapping arc sort of thing and and then some of it is actually in silhouette which helps sell you on the idea that there's more depth than there really is or more detail than there really is even you got to be careful with silhouettes but even still you know you no, notice how they're sparing there's a big silhouette here a sil and the silhouette continues on through here and then you know he's got a little bit of a silhouette going on here there must be a tree that's causing it and then a little bit of silhouette going on there silhouette on these tr tree branches going on through here and that's pretty much all that he's done with the silhouettes um, well he's kind of gotten a, a tree out here in silhouette but ultimately a uh, very sparing on the silhouettes there's a lot of clarity to the scene and it, it just it looks phenomenal to me okay moving on to the next one okay now this kind of further illustrates my praise of Jeff Smith's artwork where here he is he's got he's got silhouettes going on through here you know he can kind of with his ink brush he can kind of imply that there's leaves and stuff all through here just with very little effort with just his uh, his inks and then kind of fill in this whole region here and uh, then he can kind of get some irregular shaping going on here and then fill it in with silhouette kind of imply that there's uh, grass uh, going on through here maybe some leaves going on through here just by rounding out the the shape uh, from from being just like this for grass and then kind of going more so uh, round and stuff like that for, for leaves and such going around you know this little region right here and all of that's all of this is is enshrouded in silhouette um, but you know to break up the the silhouette you know he's got some well rendered grass going on through here but all of this I, I, I kind of feel is is still just overlapping stuff like overlapping grass I think but I'm not really quite sure how he sketched that out uh, some of it is overlapping arches I think even still and, and then I guess he went something like just went ahead and added a, a few more details uh, to them as yeah I think that's all he did this, again this is just overlapping arches again um, and and then like right next to it he, he goes ahead and goes like that no there you go you got grass that's kind of leaning over leaning over on its side now what I find really interesting is like uh, the background you know he's got some overlapping arches kind of going on throughout here and then he's like oh tree 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 and a uh, few overlapping arches and there you have it that's that's the whole scene really you know overlapping arch here overlapping arch going like that and then you know he's he's got He's, he's got some really impressionistic looking tree like uh, leaves going on through here and they get even more impressionistic as you get further off in the distance and then he's got some really well rendered ones going on through here like so he's got all that going on uh, so uh, and, and he's even got well rendered uh, leaves going on through here as well and well, I, I kind of think that he uh, had a reference for this specific leaf uh, to be honest and 
you know, there, so he's got a variety of, of well rendered stuff with impressionistic stuff as it goes off in the distance and and he didn't even have to render an entire forest really all he needed to do was kind of render this alcove the, the this alcove uh right here he rendered that alcove really well um all throughout here and uh you know the, the overlapping uh, arches going on through here silhouette silhouette uh and mostly silhouette up here and then you know some really well rendered leaves some impressionistic leaves around here overlapping arches little tree stumps here and then he's pretty much done okay like uh, to, to draw out the gestural uh, sort of um initial sketch for this cover of bone i don't think it took a whole hell of a lot of effort but yet he rendered it out really well the background is is really elegant uh this character is kind of hokey of course you know kind of super cartoony but nothing else is and of course you know this monster kind of creepy but a little rat monster uh but still it's uh it's kind of cartoony in its own way uh so yeah let's move on a very very nice image by the way how do you render a swarm of bugs that's a good question. Now, as I look at this, you know, it looks like um, from from just looking at at this bug that's uh, right here, this bug that's right here. OK, it looks like uh, it's kind of a impressionistic drawing of grasshopper. OK, and so basically he draws kind of some, a foreshortened grasshopper. OK, the, the wings going on through here. OK, and then he draws kind of like a silhouette of a grasshopper going on through here and then another silhouette of a grasshopper going through here. Another silhouette, maybe a little bit more detailed. And he, he draws out a whole bunch of them. But, you know, it, it, they're there comes a point where it becomes absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he, he rendered out a whole bunch of them, and it, it kind of looks like to me, and, and once again, you know, I mean, it, you might be tired of hearing of this, but you know, overlapping arches going on through here, uh, kind of determining, okay, so um, I'm going to have fully rendered, like kind of impressionistic, but still fully rendered bugs going on through this specific uh, overlapping arch, number one, okay? Now, overlapping arch number two, it's going to be even more impressionistic. It's, it's, it's not going to be fully detailed, and most of it's going to be enshrouded in uh, silhouette. And, you know, some of it's going to be so impressionistic some of these bugs are just kind of little specks off in the distance and and most it's mostly just you know silhouette going on and then in overlapping arch number three it's going to be even more silhouettes uh, with just a few uh, negative silhouettes being white silhouettes of these uh, grasshopper bugs here but 90% of it is pretty much going to be a silhouette. And then in number three, uh, or rather number four, you know, it, even more of it's going to be enshrouded in silhouette. And then negative white silhouettes uh, of them, even fewer of them in white silhouette like that. And then, you know, you have little specks uh, of them kind of coming out, you know, kind of irregularly. And then ultimately you wind up with this, with uh, an image that has the bugs. So that is an interesting one. Way of illustrating you know a swarm of bugs uh, just with a quick series of overlapping arches maybe something kind of like that and then you kind of determine okay this is the closest one so most rendered and then this one will start having silhouette this one will have more silhouette and this one will have most silhouette okay very interesting technique I think uh, now of course I don't know if that's necessarily how he thought but I'm willing to bet that that's exactly how he thought look at the ground look at it it's well, yet again you know okay so he's got a little overlapping arch going here then another one like that another one like that okay and then he's got a little arch here and then overlapping arch there another another overlapping arch there here here and then like that and then he kind of finished it off there and then you know with his ink brush you know he kind of just made some thick stuff going on through here kind of implying that there's more detail than there really is he goes ahead and draws out a line right through here kind of a squiggly line and then he goes ahead and he draws a few overlapping arches and oh look those are pebbles on the ground little a little gathering of rocks and then you know uh, just little tiny overlapping arches here and there and little specks to kind of 
represent uh, okay and a little pebble there right in this little region notice how this is smaller than this collection of pebbles much smaller again kind of implying that there's depth and really it's really well done uh, I really like how he made this image and again it's formulaic and very well executed all simultaneously at the same time I like it I like his work so anyways I hope that this uh, has all been kind of informative I know that I've covered this briefly on my discord server and uh, you know I offer up critiques towards uh, people's artwork a lot of the time uh, sometimes people post a picture and I, I just don't have anything to say about it but other times I see something and or sometimes some people ask what's wrong with my picture and I'm able to kind of dissect what's going on and of course the critique is never geared towards being mean or anything like that because the end goal uh, my end goal is basically to try and help other people become better artists so if you're not in my discord server make sure that you're in my discord server it's in a link in the video description below Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me and participate with my community, there's a link to my Discord in the video description below. If you'd like to support this channel, feel free to purchase one of my t-shirts on my Teespring. A link is in the video description below. Or there's a picture of my mascot in the upper right corner of the screen. It leads to my Patreon. Any support would be much appreciated. And if you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.